Hi Kinky Curl friends and welcome to my first YouTube video. Today we're going to make a flaxseed gel with perfect pH. It's going to define your curl, fill the hair cuticle, help you control frizz, and provide hold. Let's take a look at the ingredients. You'll need a pot. I prefer stainless steel. I added whole cloves to preserve the mixture longer than normal. I also added dried lavender flowers, dried chamomile, of course you need flaxseed. If you want your gel to have hold, you're going to want to add some marshmallow root. You'll need lemon, just a small wedge will do. A little bit of honey. This is going to impart moisture as well as add humectant value. Distilled water. Ah, you'll need tongs. You're also going to need a little scraper. Measuring spoon. A spoon to stir it with. I prefer a wooden spoon, but it's up to you. You also need a fine mesh strainer. And this is not going to be what we use to strain the gel. I prefer to put my gel in a pump bottle rather than a jar. You'll see how thick this gel is and that pump bottle will come in handy. Although I didn't show you, you're also going to need a knee high to strain your gel later. Keep in mind before we get started, we are actually making an herbal tea that we'll use to boil our flaxseed in. Here I've just added three cups of distilled water. And now I'm going to add my dried lavender flower. I'm going to add two tablespoons. This is going to make your mixture smell absolutely delightful. It also adds moisture. I'm going to add one tablespoon of chamomile. And yes, this is the same chamomile that you would use to make in a tea. I'm going to add one tablespoon of whole clove. As I mentioned earlier, these cloves are going to actually help to preserve your mixture. My one little lemon wedge, I'm just going to squeeze it one time to get a little bit of the juice out. This is going to lower the pH significantly. I'm actually putting in a half of a teaspoon of honey. I'm going to stir it down in the mixture just to make sure I get as much of it off the uh, spatula as I can. Don't want to waste anything. And of course you want to give it a stir. You want to get the herb down into the water. Now as it stands, I have this on high heat. You just want to barely bring it to a boil in order to get all of the moisturizing, the fragrance, and all the good stuff out of the herb in order to get a tea that's going to be wonderful for your flaxseed gel. This is where my recipe differs than most of the flaxseed gels you see online. As you can see, now I have it coming to a boil and I'm going to turn it down to low. You don't want to cook all of the good properties out of the herbs so you only want it to just come to a boil and then you can turn it down to low. Look in the pot and you can see it's actually a tea. This is what you want to use to make your flaxseed gel. Now that it's simmered, I'm going to pour it through the strainer so that we will have our tea that we'll use to actually make the flaxseed gel. Now depending on how long you uh, simmer the tea will actually um, determine how much liquid you get. I actually ended up with slightly more than two cups and all that I need for the flaxseed gel mixture is two cups of in this case herbal tea and as you can see now I'm just trying to get as much of it out as possible sort of the way you would if you were making a cup of tea and you wanted to strain your tea bag. So I got pretty much as much as I'm going to get using a spoon out of the uh, herbs. 
and I ended up with slightly more than the two cups that I needed so I'm just gonna pour a little bit back into the pot hopefully you can find something else to use you could actually let that cool and make sort of a moisture spray for your hair keep in mind all of these herbs are optional I wouldn't eliminate the lemon you want to lower the pH that's the magic in this recipe Okay, so I've rinsed the pot out and now I'm going to add my two cups of herbal tea. By now I'm sure your house will be smelling amazing. I'm going to add one quarter cup of the actual flax seeds. Keep in mind you want to stir, stir, stir throughout this process because the flax seeds will stick to the bottom of the pot. And I've just added one teaspoon of marshmallow root. Marshmallow root is optional. But this is the ingredient that will give this gel the hold that a lot of commercial gels have. And depending on how much marshmallow root you add will determine how much hold you get. For one teaspoon, this gel is perfect for twist out. It has amazing shine, it has amazing moisture. And you can even use it for a wash and go style when you want a wash and go style that has a little hole. In the very beginning, it's going to feel just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a crunch, but nothing drying at all, nothing damaging to your hair. Now, I felt it once off the spoon and it was just slightly slippery. It has a long way to go. It's starting to thicken up a little more each time that I pull the spoon out and let it drip back down into the pot. You want to keep your pot going high. There's no need to put it down to low and let it simmer. Flax seeds can handle it as long as you're stirring. You're going to make sure your flax seeds don't stick. The mixture's not going to burn. The liquid will reduce. This is part of what helps the flax seed gel to thicken. Although, once you are done making the flaxseed gel and it's cooling, it's going to thicken significantly more. So you want to keep testing it, keep stirring, keep it boiling on high. I'll list the ingredients below and I'll also be sure to tell you which are optional and which are not. I do want to stress, you don't want to leave out the squeeze of lemon juice. This is what lowers the pH which seals your hair cuticle, which maximizes the shine that all of these moisturizing ingredients will give you. Okay, you'll see I'm moving quickly now. I want to get the gel while it's piping hot out of the pot and strain through the knee high into a heat safe glass container. The gel probably boiled for close to 10 minutes or so, but it's going to be your testing of the gel to see how thick it is to determine when you take it off. Take a look at how thick it is as I scrape it out of the pot. Thick and slimy and it's probably kind of disgusting looking, but this is exactly what you want. This is going to have the slip and the hold that you need. Everything up until now has been pretty easy. Now it's time to get the thick, thick gel out of the knee high. As you can see, a lot of it has already strained through the knee high before I even did anything. But the fun comes in when you use the tongs, which if you look at them, they're kind of like spatula tongs. They're, they're all plastic and they, they work very, very well for uh, flaxseed gel. I'm squeezing and squeezing and um, I'm not going to get out as much as I would like and when you actually do this process for yourself, you'll see it's not as, I don't even think it looks easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. Once you start squeezing on the knee high, it's hard to slide the tongs down smoothly. They fl it flips all over the place. 
the, to uh, the uh, tongs keep hitting my glass container and the neon bounces back up and you're afraid that you're going to get it everywhere. So I actually made out pretty well with this particular batch. I've tried different tongs to make this flaxseed gel and these plastic spatula-like tongs work the best for me. I've tried metal, they just ripped the knee high. I've tried silicone, they were too slippery and I couldn't get enough control. So this was the happy medium. These were the tongs that were, worked best for me. So I, I take my spoon and I scrape off the excess thick, thick gel that I got out at the very end. And in the glass beaker, you'll notice the thicker gel looks a little different than the gel that kind of slipped through before I even had to do any work. But it's when you combine these two that you get a super thick gel um, or slime. It almost looks like a kid's slime that they play with. It works like magic. I let the gel cool down for about a half an hour and I'm trying to pour it very slowly through the funnel and into my pump bottle. The gel has basically thickened or congealed to the point where it's one massive glob. If I don't try to pour it extremely slowly, the entire container would come out at one time. It would actually overflow the funnel, which I've done before. That's not fun. I'm using a bamboo barbecue skewer to kind of break up the gel so that it goes through the funnel. Otherwise, it's trying to go through as one giant mass of gel and it just doesn't work. Okay, so I've spared you all the poking and prodding of getting the thick flexi gel into the pump bottle and we're now at the end. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much filled up this 8 ounce bottle and so that kind of gives you an idea of how much um, flexi gel you're going to get from this recipe. I'm going to show you in a moment that the pump bottle actually it gives you pretty much just the right amount of flaxseed gel you'll need each time. I wish I could tell you how long this flaxseed gel lasts before it goes bad. However, I can't because although I've never used a preservative in this recipe, I keep it in the refrigerator and it has never gone bad. As many times as I've made this recipe, I've never had mold or it go rancid and, and smell all funky on me. Keep it in the refrigerator. You won't have any problems. I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Thank you for watching my first YouTube video. Thank you.